Uh, what Jeremy and I are going to talk about are intelligent maps and cloud-based GIS, something we've been working on at S3 for some time. But I'd, I'd like to start off giving a little bit of context, which is about our users. We have about 350,000 enterprise organizations who use GIS software, and they work on all kinds of location problems. They are not so personal specific. They're more uh, associated with, with this list, things like business efficiency or conservation or land use planning or making cities more livable, organizing and optimizing for logistics, those kinds of things. I'd like to simply say it's taking location beyond just a dot on a map or a pinpoint and getting into the meaning of geography and how that affects how we run our institutions. In the last few years, these trends are beginning to really come together nicely. And this conference, thanks to the O'Reilly organization, have really tried to focus it. Trends in computing and networking getting faster and now going to cloud. Increased measurements, data capture, sensor networks, now crowdsourcing a new form of geospatial data. The software is getting easier. It's moving to the cloud. Uh, it's more interactive. Uh, it has more analytics inside of it. Also, the science behind the software, the sort of GI science, is maturing. Geography, as well as all other fields, are bringing about better understanding of how the world works. And finally, especially in this administration and now spreading around the world, more open data policies are allowing the world to see the world. Uh, in other words, creating a greater consciousness about geography and how it, how it really works. From a technology standpoint, GIS is implemented in multiple patterns. There's the traditional enterprise pattern of desktops and servers and federated systems. Microsoft, Oracle, IBM are the, the sort of founders of those patterns. Now moving to the cloud with access by everyone is the, is the big step. Cloud platforms are emerging, as we saw from the Google presentation this morning, and what we're going to show you here as well. The web cloud pattern for us is a pattern that allows us to connect everything. The easy, powerful desktop, mobile web clients to the enterprise servers and now cloud services that can support mapping and visualization and data management in the cloud. In other words, linking the authoring and using crowd to the cloud, that sort of notion. Geospatial services are the foundation to make this work, delivering pervasive maps to everybody. Maps, but not just maps, also visualization and analytics and some of the things that can go on in the back office uh, through servers. We've been working on a concept called intelligent web maps, uh, which are a new medium. They actually blend together multiple services, data, analytics, and publish them in a form that can be shared easily. They're editable, they're viewable, of course, visualizable, but also they run analytics in the background. And we'll look at some of those examples in a minute. These intelligent maps can actually go anywhere. They can be, of course, <coughs> services, but they can be looked at in, a, in an Android phone or in, a, in an iPhone or a Microsoft um, Windows phone. They can be looked in a browser. They can be embedded inside of a website, all those sorts of things. Social media and real-time feeds are part of these intelligent maps. They actually deliver just-in-time or dynamic services, and they're creating interesting opportunities and also challenges. How do we blend together authoritative source with this real-time dynamic data? Last year, we announced something called RTS.com at this conference. It now has millions and millions and millions of maps that are made a day. Uh, and tens of thousands of services and data sets that are in a cloud environment that people are using and exchanging. They have base maps and content. Uh, and, and, they're, and this summer, we are introducing hosting, that is, being able to author a map in a desktop, send it over to the cloud, turn it into raster cache or feature services and servers, and serve it back to our users so they don't have to buy a server. They can blend cloud stuff with, with enterprise stuff. For you, what we wanted to tell you is that this is also an interesting platform for developers. It has open APIs, templates, things to actually use. But rather than going into this, I'd rather actually just have Jeremy really show it 
in a series of simple demonstrations. All right, thanks a lot, Jack. Um, as Jack said, there's thousands, tens of thousands of maps in, Ar in ArcGIS Online. Uh, these maps tell powerful stories, like this recent imagery uh, map in Japan uh, after the earthquake. We also tell other stories, you know, socioeconomic stories, like the access to supermarkets uh, in your neighborhood. Um, more geographic stories, you know, what's the soil around you? Um, or even related back to the oil spill from a year ago. Uh, we're, near, we're nearing in on that, uh, on that date. And I'm gonna open up this map, and this is gonna be a temporal view into this, uh, into this web map. So we're seeing the oil spill animate through time. Uh, it's not just that I can move the map around, but I can also just animate temporally. Uh, this is a very powerful concept. You see how dynamic this map can be. <clears throat> Another aspect of these maps that Jack talked about is the ability to be able to share them and then view them in various uh, applications. So we have a gallery of template applications that you can just pick and use. They work with these maps. One that we just wanted to show that we put together uh, recently is to integrate social media. So it takes that map that you've been looking at uh, and then integrates with something like uh, Twitter. So I can look for tweets related to the oil spill. Um, and this is a very powerful way to integrate something that's coming in real time, you know, hitting directly to the Twitter API on top of some map that gives, your, gives you a story. <clears throat> Another map that tells a story is this map of census information. So I can touch this map, this is dynamic, it's for the whole US, and I can get detailed information back. I don't just get raw data, because that's not very useful, uh, but authored information, like the houses by income level. We can take this map and drop it in another one of these templates, like this is something we call a side-by-side -side template. It lets you compare multiple maps at the same time. Um, what's interesting is that they're all linked together, so in space and scale, these maps will stay coordinated. So I can look in the same area across three different intelligent maps. It's really a different way to look at kind of the matchup. Instead of just pushing it all into one, let's spread it out across multiple. <clears throat> Another interesting thing is that analytics are getting faster and faster. So in this example here, I'm just moving my mouse along. I'm accessing uh, gigabytes of street data, generating drive times, and then using that polygon to then go back and then query uh, census information out of another service, pull them back and generate an age graph. It's amazing where the technology is today, both on the client and on the server with the modern browsers. Well, let's just see how hard it is to actually make a map, or actually how not hard it is. First, you start off with a base map, and we have a gallery of base maps that you can work with, whether it's with Microsoft uh, or the great work of the OpenStreetMap community. <clears throat> and then also, we have our own set of base maps, like this topographic map, which is an authoritative, um, collaborative uh, venture that we have with our users, where they're pushing data in. So I have the goal of making a map about uh, seismic hazards in Southern California, specifically the nuclear in relation to nuclear sites. So let's just look for some data. All right, found my nuclear plants. Something like uh, earthquakes. Uh, see the uh, active hazards from the Pacific Disaster Data Center. Uh, see some um, faults from uh, USGS. Um, and then I'm gonna add one more. <clears throat> I'm gonna look at it, tsunami risk zones. Now we've got all those added. Let's switch it over to the legend so we can tell what we're looking at here and zoom into Southern California. Um, <clears throat> this is a very powerful map, tells many stories actually. So in the blue zones here, this is the areas of the, of the, of the land that are at risk for inundation zone, inundation after a tsunami. Uh, we have all of the fault information. It tells you how, where you are in terms of the, uh, the fault lines, the active hurricanes, and then also the nuclear plants. But I can, I don't have to stop there. I can then go ahead and sketch and edit into this map, because maybe I want to highlight a particular feature. So this editing is going to be stored. I'm editing a feature that's going to be stored with this map, or it could also be stored in, in, a, in a server, so they can be accessible by anybody. Let me just tweak the view a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm done. I want to go ahead and uh, save this map out. So now what we're doing is taking all those services, generating one intelligent web map that then we're gonna, gonna publish to the cloud, host online for you. Now it's only accessible to you unless you choose to share it out to everybody, but in this case I do I wanna share it to everybody and I had the goal of actually just putting it into my blog. <clears throat> and we can view that map that we just authored. This is very powerful. I mean, we want, to make, we want to make intelligent maps easy to create and then easy to be able to share out with everybody. It's not something that's uh, supposed to be difficult. 
Well, look, another area that we're working on is looking to make it easier for you to get your data into these intelligent maps, either through hosted services or just something as simple as a CSV file. So this, <clears throat> this is a little demo. And find my CSV file. I have some restaurant locations. I'm just going to drag it over onto the map. Uh, this is a simple HTML uh, JavaScript application using a HTML5 file API. And then I go ahead and save it. <clears throat> so now we're taking that, we're reading into that CSV file, we're packaging it up, creating one intelligent web map, and then saving it online. So then if I go back and see what the recent maps are that are available for us, I should hopefully see that map that we just authored. And then boom, I can go ahead and share this map out with anybody. And it's not just the graph, it's also the features and the information behind it. Finally, <clears throat> or almost finally, um, Jack talked about we're moving to hosting uh, not just simple features, but hosting cache services for you. So one of the big things that people don't want to do is they don't want to have to manage servers on their own. They don't want to have to work with the network IT guy with his white sneakers. So this is an example of a map that's authored exactly in desktop. And then all I have to do is just publish this button. And whatever I author in our desktop software, whatever symbology, whatever labels, uh, whatever multiple scale dependencies that I might set to, to tease out the information uh, where it's appropriate, is going to be packaged up, pushed to the cloud, going to generate tiles from it, and then we're going to serve it back out as a service. In the interest of time, because I'm getting kind of low, I already did that. <clears throat> and we can see that surface here. Excuse me, that map here. Multi-scale, multiple levels of detail, all packaged up on the desktop, exactly how you authored it, and then published and hosted for you on the server. Finally, we want to take just one more look at an application that maybe basically combines everything that we just talked about um, and lets anybody analyze the community. So this is an application that's a, a San Francisco crime mapping. So it lets you explore patterns in your community. So I can pick a particular uh, date and time range. I can say, well, I'm just interested in the nighttime crimes. And then I can create hotspots. This is bringing some of those geospatial analytics into the mix. We're not just creating heat maps. We're taking into account the level of violence for each of those crimes and generating hotspots, uh, not just based on location, but based on the attributes that are in those features. And as we can see, we can tie in other sources of information on top of that. So I can touch this uh, hotspot, and I see that uh, in this particular area has a very low household income compared to the rest of the state, local, and county. Um, much higher unemployment rate and a much higher high school dropout rate. So we showed you a lot of things here where we com combined many Showed you a lot of demos. We just want to get you the get, get across to you that that's, we're alive and well, and there's lots to uh, lots to take from it. Well, the the point is that we have hundreds of thousands of users that are building these various interesting authoritative source data sets, and by bringing them together in this cloud environment, we not only connect our users to our users and build applications like we just showed you, but also that information becomes pervasive through the through the vehicle of the cloud. So when we first started 40-some uh, years ago, we were just a research project, and GIS was exactly that. Gradually, we moved to build software which professionals and enterprises could actually use in various settings. What we've done in the last year is jumped in a major way into the cloud so that our users can upload their data and share it more effectively. And what I want to close with is this is an interesting opportunity because it means that all of the world's geospatial information, all of the models, all of the analytics become available for people like yourselves, developers, to, to build on top of. And what I believe philosophically is that, what I believe philosophically is that, that that'll make a huge difference in terms of the way people act and the way they behave. It'll be the integration of geospatial science and technology into virtually everything we do. Thank you very much.